Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Wednesday night, 10.54 p.m. California time, Time 9-11-2024 is the date. Uh, latest activity shows a 3.4 here on the Earthquake 3D globe. Also got some movement kicking up here across the big island of Hawaii with an elevated activity event taking place here across Kilauea Volcano. Got a little bit of de decent swarming stirring up here. Just on the summit area of Kilauea Volcano, also down here across the Upper East Rift Zone. So let's go ahead and check out uh, the latest deformation chart here, where we are going up in the last couple days in terms of inflation. That appears to be, uh, it appears like we reached a level here over the past, oh, I'd say week, 10 days prior to today, where it was uh, substantially stationary. Not a whole lot of uptick, not a whole lot of earthquake activity, but we're getting a little bit of further push here of magma inflation that is creating uh, that rise here on the chart. And we're seeing that elevated earthquake activity take place here across the Kilauea volcano. Get some earthquakes just below the surface here. Very shallow, about half a mile or so uh, for the majority of these quakes. So we'll keep an eye on it. Uh, in terms of, uh, well, I mean, could see an eruption at any time here. But things are quite heightened underneath the area. And uh, just takes a little bit more, you know, that little bit more pressure to create uh, an eruption out there. Not a whole lot there on the cameras. Can't really see a whole lot uh, across the area. Now we'll have to wait till the morning and see uh, what's going on out there. But, uh, yeah, obviously some elevated activity out there across Kilauea Volcano. California area, a handful of smaller quakes out here lighten up slightly from about the Bay Area southward here. Mostly microquake activity up and down the plate boundary. Uh, as you can see there, some around Bakersfield. A little bit of swarming outside here of southern or the uh, Marietta area. That's around the uh, this little mountain range here. Uh, what is that? Cahula? Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. If not, hey, correct me. A little bit of swarming going on here across this area, but generally um, starting to see a little bit of increasing activity here today following a couple days of uh, quietness. So we'll see how that plays out. Pacific Northwest, areas around Yellowstone, uh, nothing major going on, but let's just give a quick glance here. Going to try and keep this a little short, simple. What is this? <laughs> Hear my voice go down. It's like, whoa, what is that? What is that? So it's one of two things. That's a major earthquake swarm kicking up, or it's a uh, a lot of thunderstorm activity. So I, this is going to be a little tricky. Let's see what we got here. Got some other reading over here across the western area of the park as well. This activity occurring about two hours ago, three hours ago. So we're going to have to verify this and see what it is from the windy map. A lot of times earthquake swarms can actually look like that as well, but... Let's go see. I want to. I want to double, double check this here. Uh, I'm guessing it's going to be a lot of intense um, thunderstorm activity. So we're going to go back the last six hours and see what pops up here across Yellowstone National Park, which sits right here. Zoom in just a tad bit. Lake Yellow, Yellowstone there in the outline. And hello, McFly. Are we working? slowly loading there we go um yeah there was a lot of lightning strikes out there look at that band of uh, that is it right about there about two three hours ago there was an intense amount of, of uh, thunderstorm activity that blew through there hundreds of lightning strikes i'm sure and that is exactly what we're seeing here on the graph lots of thunder lots of uh uh maybe some wind in the background as well so those are not uh, earthquakes at, at all crazy sometimes we can see stuff get mixed up here if, if the reading is wrong but uh, you always go got to go and verify what's going on here can't just assume this is an earthquake swarm it's a uh, thunderstorms kicking up out there goodness in a big fashion rest of the country out here fairly quiet folks uh, earlier today seen a massive amount of earthquake activity out here across the Vanuatu area it's since calmed down but man we had some upper fives a bunch of fours and some other smaller earthquakes in the sequence as well. That earthquake swarm followed a 6.3 earlier this morning. So things have tapered off here for now. For now. Uh, getting some uh, deeper activity returning back here across the Tonga Trench. Minimal activity across New Zealand with some threes. Uh, looks like for now the adjustment is working its way up here across the northern edge here of the Pacific Plate Boundary. Where 
Japan is seeing a bunch of fours now and some fours out there across the Aleutian Trench. So let's head up north here, see what we got. Uh, there's some of that earthquake activity here off the coast of Japan. USGS not showing all of it. There's some smaller quakes in there as well, so they're not reporting uh, the smaller ones. There's some four activity there along the Aleutian Trench. We'll watch here uh, for some further activity across the west coast here. Looks like a little bit of activity off the uh, northern edge of the Cascadia as well with a 3.0 occurring up here. It looks like just on the uh, northern edge of the Cascadia. Nothing big. Let me check out Trimmer map here tonight, see what we have going on for the Trimmer department. 18. whoop de doo Not that big of a deal. Southern in here of the Cascadia, as you can see here on the chart. That's Cascadia Trimmer, not Volcanic Trimmer, but uh, Earth... Uh, I can't really say Earthquake Trimmer because Earthquake activity is a sudden release of pressure. This is more or less... Uh, a vibrational frequency picked up between the two plates as they slowly um, slide past each other. Uh, aside from that, uh, looking at the world view out here, Puerto Rico. Oh, goodness. What have we got going back on over here? Let me see. Uh, looks like another four up here across the Puerto Rico Trench. Got an even amount of earthquake activity out here. In fact, over the last couple days here, we've seen some elevated activity in the Puerto Rico region. Getting close here to the Puerto Rico Trench, that's capable of producing some large mega quake activity out here across the subduction zone. For now, uh, some minor to moderate earthquake activity, but we'll continue to watch that. Caribbean plate here is squeezed around, gets squeezed around and pushed around here uh, from two massive plates, actually a couple different plates all around it. Uh, the Caribbean plate here gonna be in the center of this image in the pink, kind of oh, salmon color, I guess, Caribbean plate. Uh, that is shoved around by the South American plate moving to the north. Uh, you got the Cocos plate here moving off to the east. And North American plate here kind of squeezing around it as well. Uh, so there's a lot going on around that poor little micro plate. And uh, it, it does get uh, some big earthquakes out there on occasion. All right, uh, let's see what else we got. Anything major going on out here? The Atlantic, nada. Mediterranean, minimal earthquake activity. Let's move on to space weather activity where we're looking at maybe a G2 class storm here tomorrow night. All right, tomorrow night here, folks, is the forecast right here, as you can see on the Aurora forecast. We'll see how this goes. I'm thinking we're going to see a little bit more elevated activity off of this event compared to what we were expecting uh, last night, which was a complete dud. This one here is a more uh, result of a full halo CME that was Earth-directed, so we should see a significant impact pending all the conditions are in line. But uh, as far as the view line goes for the auroras, we can see that down there into the uh, oh, Nebraska, maybe. Maybe further south. We'll have to watch that. But this is the expected aurora forecast here. Of course, Alaska, Canada, Greenland, Iceland getting in on the uh, heavy-duty stuff. That's overhead stuff. But uh, we could see a little bit of overhead here across the northern plains. We'll definitely keep an eye on that. No major flares right now. The forecast calls for about 15% chance for X flare. M flare at 55. C flare around 99% chance or so. And we should see things get elevated here in the coming days. And I say that because we have a couple uh, active regions out here on the eastern limb. We're just barely getting a little glimpse of them right now. Uh, these regions out here have produced numerous far side explosions here in the last week. As far as massive CMEs. So it looks like we have... Uh, now, unnumbered, yeah, they're not named. But uh, the complexity extends a little bit further out there, uh, not quite visible here on the Earth-facing side of the sun. So we'll have to wait for that. Maybe tomorrow we'll get a little bit better perspective of what uh, the complexity looks like. All right. Um, hurricane activity. Well, let's go check on that, uh, which is right here, National Hurricane Center. Atlantic Ocean, we still have, well, Tropical Storm Francine. I got, uh, looks like some uh, sustained winds at about 50 miles per hour. I told you guys this was going to drop dramatically, and it has. Here's the uh, most re recent radar imagery here. Looks like the majority of that has moved past uh, New Orleans here. Uh, let me see if I can bring up the uh, 28 frames. I want to see what it looked like earlier. 
put this into motion here. Oh, it may not cover that activity way back when here. So uh, either way, I know these guys got a lot of rain down here, some wind damage out there as well. Either way, this, this is expected a weekend, but it's still bringing up some convective bands here around, mainly around the eastern edge, northeastern edge of the area of circulation, which it looks like right now is uh, just north of Norco area, it looks like. So expect uh, some further rain, obviously, overnight. Some further weakening as well as Tropical Storm Francine dies as it heads off towards the area of uh, Arkansas, Tennessee area. These guys get quite a bit of rain coming in. Um, we'll put the weather forecast here into motion, see what we got. There's Francine heading north and uh, bringing with it some rainfall, some moisture, and that's about it. It dies off. Uh, Northern California here. Looks like we got a little bit of rain coming up and some much cooler temperatures with uh, temperatures down in the 70s. I'm, I'm, thank you. Thank you to whoever is bringing this uh, cooler weather out my way. I do appreciate it, um, along with some rain chances. So that is uh, very nice. And it looks like behind that even uh, a little bit more pre precipitation possibilities. Long-term models. Let's see what we got. I'm a little scared to look, but well, let's see here. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, here's our cool system coming in right now. We've got a little bit of ridging that's going to set up here across the West Coast, but not much. Basically, normal average temperatures here as we head into the weekend, but then another cool spell. Look at that. That's going to be our precipitation chances and below normal temperatures. Thank you. Uh, and that's going to be a deep, low-pressure trough right here. So look at that. Awesome. Uh, the entire West Coast getting in on the action. And then another one behind that. So, all right. I'm thankful for that, let me tell you. And nothing major in terms of any high-pressure dominant pattern out here. That looks like it's going to stay mainly way up north where, yeah, I mean, it's, look at that massive high-pressure way north here in the Canada, uh, south of Greenland here. Goodness, that is a dominant, huge high-pressure. Hopefully it stays over there. I would hate to have something like that out across the West Coast this time of year. Uh, most of the long-term models here showing uh, it staying in, pos in position and strengthening up in that area. So don't you dare go anywhere. Stay out there and bring us these troughs along the West Coast. Thank you very much. All right, seismograph stations out here look pretty quiet, folks. Not a whole lot going on. You have yourself a good night. We'll see you guys out here uh, tomorrow, the Thursday morning update. We'll catch you guys back out here sometime tomorrow. Stay safe.